are a victim of state law. The state of New Jersey has, for whatever reason, we bear in mind we're in New Jersey, not Arizona. So the state here has a very different view about the rights of criminals versus the rights of the public. And in this state, they have decided that uh, the weight of the public who needs services um, weighs heavily uh, on whether or not they can uh, fear for prosecution or uh, other uh, criminal uh, pursuits um, when they come to get aid. And because of that feeling, they have given them certain rights to privacy that we as a county have no choice but to adhere to. And much we want to uh, share that information, at least we are compelled by state and in some cases federal law from doing so. Um, and in the case that occurred this weekend, um, you had a person who was not a felon, who was not you know, murdering or killing folk, the trash the room, and the police came and asked, you know, can you tell us who this uh, individual is? And unfortunately, our hands were tied. And the county is very much a dumping ground for this kind of these, these services where we are put in a very bad position of not being able to help. And uh, I know Ms. Taylor met with the prosecutor's office today and, and uh, to sort of uh, determine what, what kind of liberty we have. And the prosecutor confirmed that we were correct and that we could not disclose yeah. this information. So, um, so what you're telling me is that there's never an emergent condition no, such as this what one. What I'm telling you is that this weekend was not an emergent condition. And that this weekend we were correct. There are maybe other times where we can't. So the police thought it was an emergent condition, though, didn't they? They did, but, they, but the prosecutor concurred with us that it was not. Right, but the prosecutor was not in the room, did not go down and see the room, did not realize the level of maniacal behavior that was going on there, correct? I, I, I'm sure the prosecutor did not go down and see the room. Yeah, so when does it in our county get to the level of where a guy's dangerous? I can, I can tell you that. Oh, sure. I'm the director. No, no, that's quite all right. What happened was there was, you're right, someone came or was in the Fountain Hotel and they did do damage to a room. My department was contacted. They were requested to give information with regard to who this individual was. He, They were told that we couldn't comply with that request unless he was a fleeing felon. That's, I think, the standard you're looking for. I think you're talking about two different things. One is an emergent condition if you as a social worker or a therapist or a clinician find that this person is a danger to themselves or others. That's a different reporting standard, and that is the law that you have the duty to report, it's called. That isn't exactly applicable here, but that is one emergent condition that I think you're referring to. In this instance, all we could do is comply with a grand jury subpoena or comply with a request if it was the issue and it was a fleeing felon. We asked, did this man commit a felony? Is, a, is he a fleeing felon? We were told, no, no, he's not. But we still want the information and we said, okay, if you still need the information, our obligation is then to respond to a court order. Go ahead and get a court order and then we will respond to that and give you the information that is subject, subject to that court order. But we did not receive a court order. That's the standard, though. It has to be a fleeing felon, grand jury subpoena, or other, you know, um, administration-related issues. Okay. Other, could I ask another question? Um, people in the community around that area, too, would like to know why that was chosen as the dumping ground for all these people, because the Fountain Motel has had over a hundred incidents with the Clinton Township Police with people that are just being put there. I think that's, it's one of about six different places that they put people, and the standard is, will they accept the state, the state mandates you pay $50 a night for someone who is housed, who is otherwise homeless. The Fountain Hotel accepts $50, as do a few other hotels in the area. What happens is someone comes, they qualify for services, we determine that they're homeless and in need of this service, and then we have to find a place for them to go. Usually it's based on who's got a slot open in their hotel. Okay, there's so about the six in the area. It's not just the fountain. And I understand there's incidents that happen there. Well, it's, it's become a public nuisance, really. Well, then the fountain hotel needs to not accept $50 a night. Okay. I mean, if the, I, I, I can't think of any other way to avoid it other than they would raise their rates. I mean, we're not the whole, uh, we don't place, I think we have 10 people there right now. Right. And I think it's about 40 beds. I'm do that just for the record, I think Mr. Yeah, Wall has we, some statistics of the, the county the has, right, we have, just so you have, 
The Fountain Hotel has 38 units. Right now, today, 10 of those units are occupied by county referrals. Okay? There's a Siesta Hotel, there's a Travel Hotel, Ramada, and the White House Hotel in Hunterdon County. The White House Hotel has 8 of our uh, homeless population, the Ramada has 19, the Travel Inn has 23, the Siesta has 3, and the Fountain has 10. So, it's not like it's the only place we send them, we don't target it, and I believe they're sort of given the choice. They have the voucher and they can say, where do you want to go? And they choose it. Um, it's a, you're absolutely right, and the, the Fountain Hotel is a place with a lot of problems, and with the county certainly um, can look, and we are looking at other places and other avenues for placing people who come to us for help. We don't want to say, if I had, if I was down on my luck and I came to the county, the last place I'd want to go is some flea bag hotel where there are a bunch of criminals, all right? So it's not in our interest or in our client's interest or in a, or in a criminal client, because I know that client term is not exactly uh, palatable to a lot of folks, to, to send them there where they know that their neighbor may be somebody who's on the land. So we are looking at other options, and believe me, that is not the most ideal situation for any of these folks. Um, if folks want a good, real good, thorough review, the, the um, Courier News had a very thorough and long article from 2008 discussing the, the dilemma of this situation that we've got people who, some of which are bad folks, some of which are good folks, that are on hard times, and they wind up there. That's no good for them, and it's no good for the Clinton Township. This is, this is a very bad situation that we are trying to manage as best we can. And you can say, well, maybe the county should build a, a, a shelter of some sort. Nobody wants to build a shelter. You've got hotels that are in the business of providing housing for people on a temporary basis. So, yes, this is a big problem. It is a big news for Clinton Township. They have a tax that the state created to help offset that. The revenue from that tax was $170 last year, and this year it's about 410 Not near enough for Clinton Township to deal with the problem of uh, referrals who may cause a problem. So the state had to do more to help fix this. Um, the county, as I said, has been dealt a bad hand. We're trying to make the most of it. Um, there are certain things that we need to try to get reformed that we're going to be talking to our legislators about. There are certain things that maybe we can do better. We're going to look at those avenues and try to do better. But at the end of the day, it's, it's a mess. And we're trying to do what we, the best we can. And in this particular case, even the prosecutor said after reviewing it, yeah, you did what you had to do. And none of us like it. None of us in, this, in, the, in the Human Service Department, or here in the county, want to help criminals. That's the last thing any of us get involved in this for. And unfortunately, to a certain degree, our hands are tied.